Be right back. All right, so I got this issue. I got clamps and nowhere to put them. They're all, they're all in a pile over there. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna make a clamp storage system. It'd be cool if you watched it. I'm gonna measure a couple of things and then take this all inside, do some computer magic and make it before I make it. You follow? Let's lay out a couple of things and find out what kind of dimensions we're working with. So that measures, we're gonna make it eight. That's gonna be 28. That's about 24. It's got the numbers. Let's put some numbers on board. Let's do it this way. Feet there, there, and twenty there. Ooh, that worked. That'll make that easy. We got the top holes laid out that direction. Let's do. These. Oh, it's the life. All right, back at it again. So we got that one, that one, and that one. Need to drop it down, get a little lower. That one, that one, that one. center punch, start punching some holes. Little thing or something like it. I, I don't know where I got it. I've had it forever. Spring loaded punch. Best thing ever. We're gonna use a half inch.
now, gonna drill all the way through every one of these. <laughs> By the way, that's a one sixteenth. I picked this up at Woodcraft a couple of months ago. It is a super cool little kit. There is a whole bunch of different size countersinks. Little bitty guy, not so little, medium, kind of big, and then the big daddy over here. And they're all different like sizes, you know, like a little bit of fella and big old beefy boy. But the cool part is this thing. You can take and swap out the set screw on this to this big old set screw. It's nice to be able to have options and dial things in just the way you want, depending on what screw you're using. Matter of fact, kind of need that screw. So if you've not ever set up a countersink bit before, the way I do it is I'll hold my screw parallel with the drill bit and then set the taper at the flat head of the screw and then the end of the screw with the tip of the bit. So once you get that kind of set in, we'll snug up this, the bigger set screw. That lets you put the stop, my favorite part about this kit, on here. Then you use this big old nut, put that on there, snug that down. Make sure you don't move it like I just did. Snug that down. And Bob's wrong. So the little, uh, that thing, the collar is pretty cool. Here's what it does. I can't drill any further. Pro tip, sand the back off so you can find your holes. <laughs> Coolest noise in the shop. So, I knew that the sander didn't come with a dust extractor, but I I just kind of assumed that it came with at least a little dust baggie, like the little cheap ones, like the uh, like the Craftsman, this, but uh, I was wrong. So if you order one of those 3M sanders, I guess, or, or do any of the high-end sanders come with those? Do they just expect you to have the full kit. Let me know, because I, I was unaware. So I just uh I just I just make a big mess.
I just check this out. I have a tin roof on this shop, and it was raining. So it means voiceover time. So here's the deal. I am cutting out a bunch of dowels right now. They, uh, I originally called for 8 inches on the plans that I've got drawn. Uh, the original plans say 8 inches. But they needed to be 7 inches. So you can see me here. I'm recutting them down to 7 inches, which was actually really cool because I ended up being able to use these right there, those last two. Um, I was able to use the entire dowel instead of just part of the dowel. Uh, it made a, a better yield. So you got more parts out of the same amount of material. Pretty cool. Um, plus, I think 8 inches was a little bit too much leverage towards the end of the dowel. Once it's on the wall, you put a whole bunch of clamps on there. It was, there was just a lot of extra weight. And now is the first dowel going in. Let's see, going to do a little pre-drill. Oh, no, no pre-drill. Just straight to the screw in. Yep, it's there. Is it square? Of course not. Is it now? Eh. It's pretty freaking close. Close enough. Who are we kidding? We're not doing accurate work here. We're just putting dowels and holes and putting it on a French cleat like we're in our own garage. Oh, is that a snapback? Am I in a garage? If uh, if you're on Instagram a while back, you know the drama. Anyhow. Um... I forget where I saw it. I saw it the other day on Instagram. Somebody used a clamp to hold a piece up like that. And I was like, I can't believe I've done woodworking for as long as I've done. And I've never thought about using a clamp like that. So you're welcome if this is your first time seeing that. Not good. All right. More glue, more holes, more dowels. Oh my goodness. That over there looks like a small field of trees with a whole bunch of wind pushing those dowels over. It's ridiculous, but here in just a minute, you'll see once you screw them in, it pulls them pretty snug. And uh, the glue in there squeezes right out. Oh, there went that. I tried using a bigger screw just to see if it pulled any better. And uh, no, don't use the regular deck screws, the number eights. Uh, use the ones linked in the description because the big ones ended up not wanting to bury into that soft pine dowel. It didn't work too well. There you go. You see as I screwed them all in, it kind of pulled everything a little bit more square but it was uh it was good enough for what i needed it's just a clamp rack all right here we are back at the coolest crosscut sled that i have personally seen i love it all the tracks in there are for match fit hardware here is that super cool, famous 3M sander that I don't have a dust extractor for. I thought it came with a little dust baggie. I was wrong. So, for now, I don't have any kind of dust collection. <laughs> there we go. I shot a nail all the way through. Pro tip, check your nail length before you just start slinging nails. It's a two inch nail going through an inch and a half worth of material. So I have half inch worth of nail sticking out the front of that. A few more screws and we are almost at the finish line. There it is. There is the clamp rack. I think it turned out pretty good. I like that it's got a whole bunch of different size specific spots for the clamps. It's just big enough to hold a whole bunch of clamps, but it takes up hardly any space in comparison to clamp systems I've seen before that would take up half of a wall. All right, did you count them? There are 43 clamps on the wall. Yep. 
Yep, there are that many. All right, if you thought this was cool at all, I mean, even at all, the slightest little bitty bit, hit that like button, please. You'd be super, super, super cool. Hit that subscribe button while you're at it. I mean, it's right there next to the like button. It's not that hard. It's right there. Cool. See you next time.